Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today's card is going to be something a little bit different. I am starting out using Coaster Critters, Wheelie Great Day, and Tiny Winter Friends. So off camera I've went ahead and stamped several images and for like my reindeer and these little stands I've actually masked off some of the pieces so that I could have multiple stamped images on one piece before I ran it through my scan and cut. For my colors today, I'm just using a bunch of different reds, so I will put them on screen, but if you don't see them again, it's because I've already used these colors. I'm just using them in varying orders to get lighter and darker shades of red. As I color these images, I haven't colored these before. I am trying to mark out where my darkest color is going to be with my darker marker and then moving in to my lighter colors. Now. I've only started doing this after I've gained a lot of confidence while coloring with markers. Otherwise, I probably would have mapped out with my very lightest color first, or at least the mid-tone, so that I could sort of cover it up if I didn't like where I placed the shadows. Obviously, do what works best for you. For me, I've actually changed the way I do things over the years. I used to be way more timid when placing my shadows, and I also only used to use three markers, and now I find myself sometimes feeling like three's just not quite enough, and I have a lot more confidence when I place shadows. And if you're not there yet, just be bold. Test something out. It's just paper, you know? It's not that big of a deal if it doesn't turn out exactly like you want. Maybe you learn something. I will also say that because I've put all of my stamps into a binder, like I've stamped everything out that I own onto paper to put in a binder, I have this as an opportunity to color items that I haven't colored before in a way that is fairly stress-free because even if I don't love it in the binder, the binder is just there to help me remember which stamp sets I actually have. Does anyone else struggle with coloring Christmas cards? For some reason, my brain always wants to go traditional red and green, but I don't actually love traditional red and green when I'm coloring with it. Like, I can see other people's stuff and be like, yes, that looks really good, but when I go to do it, for some reason, I just don't love it. So I tend to fall into either doing a more monochromatic color scheme, I mean, maybe not entirely, but, you know, primarily one color in varying shades, or I do like a red with a Tiffany blue, mint green, or then I just do maybe like all blues or something, which isn't the most Christmassy, but it is kind of cool winter tones. I don't know how many Christmas cards I'll get in this year, but maybe I'll try to branch out a little bit more from what I traditionally do. Now something I don't think I showed on camera was coloring in the white areas. I just add the smallest amount of cool grays to where I wanted the shadows. It's not super noticeable in the end.
So for my deer, I'm pulling out my E70 markers. These are my favorite brown. I love to color deer with these colors. And I also, I think I've only ever really colored moose with these colors. I don't know. It's my favorite. I just don't use it enough. Anyway, for my deer, the dark colors are going to be on one deer. The lighter colors will be on another. Just so that it doesn't look like one animal with multiple heads or something. And they all get E79 on their little feet. I'm going to keep it simple and use E42 to color in the little faces and the antlers. If the deer were the main focus, I'd probably have a little bit more color variation in it, but since they're just one small element to the whole card, I didn't figure it mattered too much. Now, for my people, I'm just pulling out random E markers to give them all a slightly different skin tone, and I did try to bring out the E70s again. So a couple of them have E70 hair, just because I felt like if I added a different shade of brown, that might kind of throw it off. So here I tried to use my E18 only to find out that it is extremely dry. Now this is due to a barrel issue with the marker, not the fact that I've just used it so much that the ink has ran out. Moving on, I'm getting out my scallop slimline with hearts dye and my stitched hillside borders. I have cut two out from the scallop slimline and then I have used the stitched borders on one of them to create some snow. To ink over the top, just to make it look a little bit separate from the background, I am using Long Fawn's Minty Fresh Ink, and I'm trying to just concentrate it on the very top towards the back. Now, I did have a really hard time getting the color to really show up anywhere other than that initial stitched area. For the background, I'm going to do a similar thing to the background with Kitty Pool Ink, but I'm going from the bottom, kind of working my way up. And yes, this ends up very patchy, but you don't really see it in the final card. I dare say it's probably time for me to clean my blending brushes, but since they take so long to dry, I never know when to do it. I did feel like my snow needed a little something else, so I have this sheer shimmer spritz in the color frost, and I'm just going to spray this. Now you can't really see what I did, it doesn't really look like I did much. I tried to show you here, and you can kind of see a dot here and there, but it doesn't show the best on camera. Now I'm going to stamp some snowflakes in Minty Fresh ink, sort of randomly. I just want to cover the whole area and make it look like it's snowing. So I went in with the big ones first, and then grabbed the little small snowflake and tried to fill in some more areas. I decided this wasn't quite enough. I'm going to add some splatter too, but I do want to leave the very borders white. So I am just masking those off with some washi tape. Now for my splatter, I have squashed minty fresh onto my stamp block and I am going to water it down a little bit with some liquid stardust. This will just make it so that it's shimmery as well as slightly colored. Now here's a quick look at what my background looks like, and I'm going to set it to the side to let it dry. Now I'm going to take my lobster ink and stamp the word tickets onto the little stand. And then for my snowman, I'm going to use a BG color to color in the shadows. I'm also going to give this a little bit of shimmer with my Wink of Stella. Also, please excuse my crackly morning voice. I'm trying to do this voiceover while my children are asleep, which means... I don't have a lot of time to wake up and warm my voice up before I start doing this. So apologies if I sound like a frog. Alright, so what I'm doing now is I am masking off my panel to try to give it some 
stripes. And I've just done this with some washi tape that I've made sure is just sticky enough to be a mask and not so sticky that it's going to rip up my paper. Because at this point I'd be a little bit upset if I ruin the front of my card. But I'm just taking one of my reds and I'm coloring in just the stitched area where the scallops are. Now once I'm done coloring it, I can carefully remove the washi tape to reveal my striped border. Now I really don't like wasting this much washi tape, but I didn't have a stencil that was going to work for this, and I didn't have confidence in myself to freehand this simple, but very specifically placed design. So now I'm just going to adhere all my little pieces down, and yes, I have a sleigh and reindeer pulling children on a roller coaster track. How that makes sense, I don't know, but it amused me, so I did it. Oh, and you'll see the addition of balloons. I didn't color those on camera, but you've seen me color balloons before if you've watched some of my other videos. Most recently, I think, what was it, the Fab Five first anniversary hop video. Now I'm just coloring in some areas of my stamped images with some BG colors to kind of blend it in with the background. I also went in again with the snowflakes to stamp in the ferris wheel to make it look like it's not separate from the background. Now I'm going in with my white gel pen, adding some white highlight details onto the balloons, onto the ferris wheel in a couple places, and then even on the sleigh. To continue making this look more like a full scene, I'm going to add some BG as a shadow underneath all of my stamped images. Now it's time to add my sentiment and I definitely did not feel like risking it with just a stamp block. So I brought out my stamp positioner and this toboggan together stamp set so that I could use the word Merry Christmas. And I'm just going to stamp that in lobster ink. Once I have finished my sentiment, my card is complete. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll be back with another video soon. Bye!